Okay, so welcome everybody for this new lecture about how Vincentians response to poverty around the world. And tonight we are happy to welcome Renato Lima, who is the international president of the Society of Saint Vincent de Paul. But we are more lucky because we also have with us Ralph Middlecombe, who is the national president of the Society of Saint Vincent de Paul in the U.S. So I will just give the, um, the micro to Ralph, and he will uh, introduce um, Renato. Thank you. Good to see so many of the Paul students here too. And Renato, I don't want to steal any of his uh, topic, but uh, many of you may be familiar with the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. But the important part is we were started by college students, uh, by uh, six college students at the Sorbonne. Uh, so it's very good to see students that are interested in this topic. It is my pleasure this evening to introduce to you uh, Renato Lima de Oliveira. He's from Brazil. In 2016, he was elected to be the international president of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, his motto is from scripture is, whoever wants to be first must be the last of all and servant of all. Uh, Renato has been very active as uh, an international president, visiting countries all over the world, really helping the unity of the society in, in these many places that he will probably be talking about tonight. Uh, during, I don't know how he gets away to do it. He has a very understanding wife, and he has a very understanding employer. He, uh, he, he uh, is an employee in Brazil of Anatel, which is the Brazilian equivalent of the U.S. Federal uh, Communications Commission. Uh, he's also uh, working in, to eventually get a degree in uh, math, a PhD in politics. So uh, he's well qualified to do this position. It's the first time we've ever had a president uh, that is from the Western Hemisphere, the Americas. And it's the first time we've ever had a president from the Southern half of, of the world. So uh, he is, uh, has a new perspective that's been important. For many years, our, all of our presidents have been European. Our last president was from Singapore. And so more and more of the society's international scope is being recognized in the leadership we have available. So it's with great pleasure that I introduce a man who's become a very good friend to all of us members of the society in the United States. He's had the opportunity to visit all over the country, so he understands us, but he will be bringing to us an understanding of what the society does throughout the whole world, and especially the topic of systemic change. So I introduce my friend, Renato. Great. Thank you. My, my mother says that my Portuguese is fantastic. <laughs> my Spanish, 70%. My English, 50%. So, uh, uh, I hope you understand my poor English, my Portu Portuguese English with Brazilian accent. Uh, but we are here among friends, so I know that you will forgive my mistakes, okay? Uh, I, I have no words to thank to the Paul University to be here. Thank for our Dr. William for this invitation. Thanks for you students. Huh? When I was a student at the Brazilian University studying journalism, uh, I, I remember that good times and I miss these times so much. So now when we come back to the university, it's a big pleasure for me. Thank you, Mathieu Bregeon, that is one of the greatest members of CGI. Thank you, Half Middle Camp, and thank you, all the members of Society of San Pedro Depot and all the members of the Vincentian family, our uh, uh, religious priests, daughters and sisters, missionaries, uh, volunteers, uh, everybody who has, is, is here uh, attending uh, this uh, project. Uh, I will um, talk um, very fast because I have lots of slides, but what I like to do is uh, after the presentation to respond to your questions. So 
uh, prepare your questions, I will be available to, to answer uh, your curiosity or your questions about this uh, subject. There is systemic change. Systemic change for us uh, is totally important because members of our group, our organization, used to do charity in an old um, way. Just giving food or giving medicines or clothes or... Uh, of course, this is totally important and I do this in Brasilia, my city. But we have to change the way we do the charity. And systemic change is the unique, in my opinion, solution because we get a job to these people. With job, you have dignity. With dignity, you are not poor anymore with education, with um, your family. So we indeed believe in this systemic change. But sometimes the mentality of the members of our groups, our branches, our SSVP, sometimes our mentality is like old fashioned. So I uh, used to talk about it because I believe in this. So this is the invitation I received from the poll. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, my introduction, brother Ralph, did it to me. <coughs> Thank you. This is our our books. I have I, we have seven books. Um, four, uh, five about a charity and uh, SSBP, and two about uh, politics. But we will not talk about politics here. <laughs> <laughs> Although I love to talk about it, but. Today we will talk. We are talking about and this year, 2020, um, my first book in English <coughs> and my fifth book in Portuguese in September. Uh, my family, Andrea uh, and Gustavo. Gustavo, he is 19 years old. He is studying accountings in, at Brazil, uh, University of Brasilia, and Bianca, and she is on the uh, at the first uh, uh, level first year of high school, 16 years old. This is uh, the group that we call conference. It's an old, uh, old kind to say group of charity conference, SSVP conference, Society of San Vincent de Paul conference, Our Lady of Fatima in Brasilia. We have uh, four assisted people, and this is our group. And Sister Ivelis is our president. At this group, at this conference, I'm just brother Renato. I'm just Renato. I'm not president general because we are brothers and sisters. We do the same. We work with the charity. This kind of titles uh, is not important in our society. We are here to serve. Um, just to explain to you, we have on the parish level the groups that we call conferences. When we have many conferences together, we have a <coughs> district council to organize the work of these charities. And the more big the country is, the more uh, bureaucratic, of course, is our organization. So we have central councils and national councils. In many countries, we have metropolitan councils, but in 95% of the society of San Francisco, this is the design, this is the layout. Conference, district council, central council, and national council. In some countries, like the uh, United States, Brazil, India, and Australia, we have this other uh, level because it's necessary because of the huge number of volunteers, employees, special works, and conferences. And all the national councils together, Water. <laughs> uh, we have in Paris uh, the Council General International. In English, uh, it could be International General Council, but we use Council General International because CGI is the same uh, in four languages. So we use this uh, CGI to be equal in four languages, but in English is International General Council. We are established in 150 territories. The Vatican is the nearest. We have found the first group at the Vatican uh, two months ago. 47,000 groups that we call conferences. 800,000 
active members plus volunteers. We uh, active members are members of the conference. They have rights and duties and responsibilities. And we have volunteers that they are not members, officially members, but they help us a lot. 30 million people assisted in one part of the world every day. We are the biggest branch of the Vincentian family. Uh, Congregation of the Mission, Daughters of Charity, um, Associ International Association of Charities. We have lots of branches in this, in this family. And the, in the SSVP, we are the biggest. We are a member of the ECOSOC, that is the Economical and Social Committee at the United Nations. And we belong to many DICA series. DICA series is like ministers. Many mean DICA series at the church, at the Vatican. And our motto, everyone, anyone who wants to be the, the first must be the very last and the servant of all. Brother uh, Ralph has uh, talked about it. And this is our head office in Paris. It's a new, brand new one, three floors. Uh, the, first ground, the first floor, the, the ground, the ground level, and the, the basement. Basement. We have three, three floors at the Rue de la Glacière. If, if you are in Paris, you want to be, if you can, you can visit us in the Rue de la Gracière, that is on the neighborhood 13. Uh, Paris, the neighborhoods are numbers. Uh, so now we are on 13th neighborhoods. This is our international structure, very complicated to understand. This is our board, people from different countries, different languages, different cultures. Sometimes you cannot make a joke because <laughs> in your country, people smile, laugh, but in other countries, oh, what did you yeah. say? <laughs> Very nice people. And this is Father Moto, Congregation of the Mission. He's our spiritual advisor. This is our strategic planning. We have a mission, vision, values. What's the most important in these values? Is this word, for me, this word, empathy. <coughs> If you are Vincentian without empathy, without suffer, like the other is suffering, you can be not a good Vincentian. So empathy, it's very interesting, this word. And this is our strategic planning. I will not talk about it because this is not the issue of our presentation, but just, just you to know that we are working on this direction. Formation, youth, this is a very, a very good challenge to have 30% 30, 30 of our members under 35 years old. This is a very huge. In many countries, we have already achieved this goal. Brazil, Indonesia, Philippines, many countries in Africa. But in many other countries, we have 10%, 15%, 20% of young people. So for every point, we have a manager. We have a goals and tasks and tax, tax force to develop this strategic plan until the end of our mandate, 2022. Uh, systemic change. We know that systemic change, we need to get a job for the people because with job, they have money, with money, they can get a food, healthy, and education. This is the cycle to break, to break the poverty. And the essential family and as SVP we are together in this direction. No doubt, no doubt that we believe in this. This is our circular letter. It's a big, people say that it's not a letter, it's an encyclical because it's too big. I don't know if it is a criticism to me. But in this circular letter, I have uh, many parts that I talk about systemic change. It is written in English. You can go to our website and put circular letter, you will see that no doubt many parts of the circular letter that I talk about systemic change. It's a natural complement to charity, uh, to take away people's hope. The poverty sometimes take away people's hope. People end up thinking that poverty is inexorable. All they can expect in this life. This is not true. We do not believe in this. Um, systemic change, change has a profound belief in the capacity of people to act and bring about change. And 
One suggested social project closely linked to systemic change idea would be the creation of employment and agencies for the people we help. Very interesting idea to create job agencies. We are not doing this. So, no doubt that SSVP and the Ascension family will work indeed with this kind of uh, 2.0 charity. And now the second part. I will show to you 10, 10 examples that produces good outcomes, uh, seven countries, but more than seven cases. When I was invited by the Paul University, I sent a, a letter to all the countries asking them to send me experience. I received lots of, uh, it was very interesting for, that, for us, not only for this presentation, but now I have, we have lots of good material. <laughs> but I separated to you the seven that I, seven countries that I think it's the, the most, most, the top for you, okay? Uh, in India, we have this uh, project called Black Tea Cooperative Work. Uh, in the past, these people used to work, work too much <coughs> and receive a very slow, very, very, very little salary. After the intervention of SSBP, we created a cooperative for them. In partnership with SSBP from Belgium, so they used to have miserable salary. They were exploited by a big tea producers in Kerala. SSVP intervened in this process, organizing the work into cooperatives, offering courses and economic consultation. The production was improved with the preparation of tea bags in box of 100 units, sachets, sachets. And workers' wages improved 200%. Now they live a decent life with their families and with their job. This is their vocation. They work with team. They, they didn't work, uh, wanted to change their job, but with yeah. dignity, with decent salaries. Good initiative in India. In Brazil, this project, Waving, Waving with Love, rugs, this lady, this lady, uh, no, no job, before this intervention. Waving regrets for the home, Antonia da Silva Medeiros, city of Aguas Lindas, state of Goiás, Brazil, nearby Brasilia. After consultation and classes, four week course, Antonia started to weave the rugs. She sells 800 per week. Around this price in Brazil is the, the, the half of the minimum salary in Brazil. So people used to live with one minimum salary in Brazil, and she now receives around two minimum salaries because it's half minimum salary per week. So uh, she is no longer assisted by SSPP. During almost five years, this lady was assisted by SSPP charity, and now, she is no longer assisted anymore. Other project in Brazil, Good Dreams, is about the production of this kind of snacks. This is very Brazilian, it's good, good Brazilian snacks. <laughs> good flavor, good uh, taste. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Natalia Procopio, city of Fortaleza. SSVP conference, St. Joseph helped her with equipment, cooking courses, materials for the production, production and sale of the Brazilian typical snacks that we call coxinha, not caipirinha, we talk about that, okay? Not caipirinha, we talk about the session, no alcohol, okay? So it's snacks, it's snacks. Now, she is no longer assisted by SSVP after this income generating project. The project is called Good Dreams because it lifts people out of poverty. Now she is selling his, her production and, is, and he is, uh, she is uh, 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 selling for SSVP meetings. Wow. Now we pay for her to uh, bring to us this. This is in Fortaleza, on the north. 
This is Carol's Beauty Salon. Look, uh, all these projects are very simple projects, very simple ideas, but for these people, it's totally remarkable. This is about Salon and about um, Quero Santos in Paraná, Brazil. Conference San Paul Apostle donated the equipment, furniture, hair dryers, nail polish, clips, etc., etc., etc. She also provides manicure and pedicure services. She accepts credit cards. <laughs> Monthly income more than one minimum salary and paying all the taxes that is terrible in Brazil. <laughs> paying fees, taxes. This is leaked. This is after the after the tributes. Leaked. The project changed her life. Changed to expand her business. She told she told on the report, I want to expand my business. This is hope that I put on the secular letter, sometimes they don't have hope, hopeless, and we are giving them hope. This community vegetable, uh, project community vegetable garden is very interesting because uh, city of Curuçá uh, in, Par in Pará, Brazil, the region suffered a lot from lack of water and a little rainfall. It's a very dry area on the north of Brazil. People used to walk many kilometers, many miles, to get water. The SSVP local conference helped to build artesian wells to extract water from the subsoil. This access to water enabled the poor of the community to begin to grow and sell vegetables. This is uh, Ronildo do Santo, Espírito Santo Pinheiro, one of the beneficiaries of the project. Now he is very happy to support his family with the efforts of his own work. Job, dignity, happiness. A community vegetable garden with a, an irrigation system was created. Three families benefited, each giving an income of more than one minimum sum, more, more than one minimum salary. People used to live with one minimum salary in Brazil. It's amazing, but they, I don't know how, but they, they live with one minimum salary. That in US dollars, 300, $300 is the minimum salary in Brazil. A terrible amount. But I don't know how, but they live with this money. This is Romildo, Romildo. This is from Trinidad and Tobago. Kickstart small business project. Production of meals, salads, meals. Uh, this is that we call, because the systemic change, we have two kinds of, two kinds of uh, projects. A collective approach and one person. Project. This is one person. Kickstart help for small business, food and packaging. Uh, the society helped with uh, working capital and financial advice. Look, 50 meals on work days and 30 meals on weekends for this lady, Marsha Charles, assisted by conference some film bars. This is a testimony of the president there. Congrats to Marsha for having grasped the opportunity presented thereby, enabling her to support her family financially and hopefully to break this cycle of poverty. We identified the same words in all the testimonies I, we received to do this presentation. All the reports use the same words to break the cycle of poverty to give dignity to these people. This is, a not, this is from Grenada, sewing program. Look, very nice. A six-month sewing program was institu instituted by the Blessed Sacrament Conference for marginalized, marginalized women to enable them to earn a, a livelihood. 
sewing machines have been donated to the program. The women attend evening classes where they are taught of basics of sewing. <laughs> Some of the graduates have already begun earning an income from this skill. Remarkable. Another from Grenada, like livestock raising project. Food security has been an ongoing goal of the Society of San Francisco Granada, and to do that end, a number of agricultural and livestock programs have been instituted with the support of the Council of England and Wales. This is in partnership with England and Wales. Two rural communities received this project. The, local, the, uh, the locally produced meat both reduces the financial strain on poor families and improves nutrition within the home. So they not only sell the production, but they use part of the, product, the production for themselves. The project is supervised by SSVP, which provides the animals to the beneficiaries who are directly responsible for their care. The animals are raised and sold by the recipients and on an ongoing basis. The beneficiaries, however, are required to give either one or two offspring back to SSVP, of course, so that the, the project can be extended to other families. This is very interesting, yeah? to, to give back part of the, the, the offspring. And the projects are geared both at the disadvantaged young orphans and disadvantaged family. So it's very social uh, project, this. United States will have three interest, uh, very interesting uh, initiatives. This is back to work program. This is totally what we need to do. I'm not saying this because Ralph is in front of me. <laughs> but this project should be uh, spread for other countries in the world. Uh, job training, uh, to give uh, a personal assessment for the staff, mention employment and job seekers. This is back to work program. So after this program, no poverty. Another kind of uh, mini loans, micro, micro loans. This is America. Escape from that, coaching and support. And after, they can uh, provide a small business and not be any more poor. Uh, in, this is very interesting. In mention projects, in mention project, focus on the special needs and challenges of those returning to our communities after incarceration. In many parts of the world, if you are a former prisoner, it's very hard to get a job after. And this project prepared this man, this woman, to come back to the to market to, to have a job and have dignity. And sometimes we do not think in these people, this kind of people, sometimes we forget them. This is all the phases in this project. In Lebanon, Project Monsieur Vincent Catering Services. All these people are assisted by the society. We create 35 jobs hmm, for people formerly assisted by SSVP conference, creates income for SSVP, high quality of the products, provides affordable food, 80,000 meals offered to the poor per year, and this is managed by conference St. Peter and St. Paul. I visited this project in, in Beirut. Other project, bringing about local development. Ah, this is production of thyme, production of honey, uh, handcrafts. And all this money is not for SSVB, it's for the beneficiaries. This is a time, a lavender, lavender. So uh, um, it's a very good project. Lavender farm, 
traditional soap production, thyme and tea farm, uh, conference San Peter in the village of Chateau. I visited this also. Kitchen project in Lebanon. They have this very good, this very good food in Lebanon. I, I stayed there only four days because it was impossible to be more <laughs> because of the food, <laughs> delicious food in Lebanon. And these people now, these ladies now, they are not assisted anymore for SSBP. They are selling their production. Uh, contributes SSVP, we help them with marketing, uh, create jobs for the housewives, provides hot meals for elderly living in the village. So we do here double charity. We create jobs to these ladies and we are helping the elderly poor people that receive these meals. So it's a one, one shot and two objectives uh, target. I visited this project. And the Philippines, we have this, it's totally new, credit cooperative. This is totally new. I received, uh, as we don't have results to present to you now, I didn't put any information, but just to say that, just to know that we have this in Philippines. So I think this, I think we finished the, yes. So this is, uh, because I don't want to get you tired, just few examples and simple, few and simple examples that w when you have good idea, you can generate income for these low or no income people and uh, give them dignity. This is systemic change. If uh, sometimes people say education is systemic change, if you say, could be, but education is more for 10 years, 20 years preparing somebody. And what these people want is right now, the solution right now. So education is more long time. Uh, many projects we receive uh, 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 formularies requesting money to sponsor educational or academical projects we have to deny because it's not exactly the target of the, uh, of the system change. Although are very important projects, we cannot input or put in this category because education, academical, this is more for the future. It's a good investment, but it's not systemic change. I know that Vincentius in their hearts, they, they, they feel that education is systemic change. Of course it is but not in this categorization that we create to uh, send the money to the countries. And what we are here, what we are here because these people inspire us too much, very much. Blessed Frederick Ozana, he said, poor, you are our masters and we will be your servants. If you see the poor as your master, you will do whatever you can do to, to serve him or her. So if we see the poor like this, we can change the world. I'm not saying this just to be sympathetic. No, I'm saying this because I believe in this. Saint Vincent de Paul, this, this sentence is very interesting. Look, God loves the poor and therefore loves those who love the poor. Because sometimes people say that oh, the rich, the rich is not going to the heaven. And only the poor. It's not correct. Um, of course, if you are rich but you are helping the poor, love God's you too. Why not? Because everybody we are here, we are poor. Everybody here in this audience, we are poor. <laughs> Father Opeka, I don't know if you know Father Opeka. Father Opeka, it's one of uh, good uh, guests that you can invite to this series of uh, systemic change, because he's like the father of systemic change. 
in Madagascar, he operated many miracles there. I think our father knows a little bit about Father Lopeka from Africa. There is no nobler cause than to give everything for the poor. He's not saying give, give money or giving, but time, friendship, this is priceless. So sometimes we, we read the sentence and think about money or goods or material things, but this is not what he's saying. He's saying time, dedication, passion, devotion, service, love, compassion, charity, gospel, hope, job. This is everything. Everything is this. And blessed Rosalie Hendu, daughter, the daughter of charity, I never pray so well as I do in the streets. Of course, the prayer is very important. We have to pray. But when you are doing charity, when you are putting your hands, your minds, to the service of charity, that's what she's saying. This is a very good prayer for God. Something like this. So, uh, I think I fulfilled the time exactly, <laughs> 45 minutes, okay, I fulfilled the time, yes, a little bit, and I'm here available to answer your questions and to dialogue with you, and thank you for your patience and your the good audience you are, thank you. First of all, I'd like to call our Dr. William, please. I have a gift for you. <laughs> when the blessed Frederico Zana, when Frederico Zana, Antoine Frederico Zana was declared blessed by the church, our Council General International uh, made this special medals in, in silver uh, about him. So in the front, the front side, we have uh, his face and a sentence I'd like to embrace the world in a network of charity. Je voudrais inserver le monde entrant dans le réseau de charité. My French is terrible. <laughs> Only Mathieu Bréjean, neither Mathieu Bréjean understand. <laughs> And in the left, on the other side, we have La Notre Dame de Paris, the, the church, Our Lady of Paris, Paris, and Sorbonne, one of the most uh, uh, important university, like the Paul University in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so we have here the La Sorbonne, Le Sorbonne, and Notre Dame that uh, faced the fire. And in two or more years, they will, they are rebuilding and they are re-elaborating Notre Dame as soon as they can. This is for the poem of the I really appreciate all of the concrete examples of um, combating or systemic change. I'm wondering, though, would you know where in the United States those two examples were about helping the people be released from prison and the back to work? We have the national oh, president oh, here. Just one second. Oh. Brother Hoff, please, please. The immersion program is happening in multiple places. It's from a, it's very strong in Des Moines, Iowa right now. It is, mm -hmm. is the Back to Work program. Boise, Idaho. Uh, there are some uh, uh, examples of what Green Bay, Wisconsin is starting it. Sacramento is starting it. And out uh, near Boston, uh, near 
providence is that we have five pilot projects that have initially been working with the immersion program it's a very many programs are working with returning prisoners but this is a very particular model that is setting up a, a, a process of, of mentoring a process of setting goals and it also will be a process that all the participants in this particular program uh, and the data will be collected to make sure they're actually following through and this will be very helpful on the grants. Anyone that is a part of this program has to be part of it. Use a program as a grant maximizer program so we can not just anecdotally say, oh, yes, a few people succeed. We, we will know exactly that they follow the steps. The Back to Work program, it's also a number, of, oh, Cincinnati, Ohio also has one of these programs. Uh, so, so the back to work is a, a little further behind than that, but the Des Moines also has that. Uh, some of the places, it's not meant to only be for returning prisoners, but it's been most successful as a program to be uh, partnered with the returning citizens. Uh, mm -hmm. so, Thank uh, you. Yeah. Thanks very much for a wonderful talk. Um, it's great to see these projects, these systemic change projects, and they're very positive, which is, which is amazing. But can you maybe speak about some ways you're seeing with, with all the places that um, the society is working right now where things are getting more challenging? And what are some of the, um, at, at a at big scale, what are some of the most challenges that are making your job more difficult, and the conference's job more difficult? Excellent question. Um, I think in Africa, I visited seven countries in Africa, and I do realize that uh, for Africa, it fits very nice, this systemic change. So, responding you very frankly, I think if we receive a sponsoring of money, we will send it uh, to Africa. Because sometimes uh, they, don't, they don't know how to fill one request, they don't know how to get the money, but they have good ideas. For example, I visited in Ouagadougou, that is the capital of Burkina Faso. Uh, I visited some um, schools to repair bicycles and motorcycles. So these people, uh, they receive a little uh, salary when they fix, but for these uh, teenagers, it's remarkable. So uh, Africa and Asia and Latin America, so are the same parts of the world that needs this kind of because if not brother we are perpetuating the poverty the miserability when uh, my thoughts my presentations in many countries i am i am trying to um, convince our members brothers and sisters of ssvp that charity is very nice we have to do it but without this approach it's impossible to change the world so systemic change is the best we can. So we have to have members with innovation, creative, creativity. If not, we will just give a basket of meals, of food, mm -hmm. of goods, of shoes, of medicines. And this, I think this is not what God wishes for us. God give us brain and intelligence to do much, much more than we are doing today. Does, um, Does SSVP have any working relationship with Catholic Charities or Caritas? Uh, good question. It depends on the country. Uh, I know that United States, we have an excellent partnership with not only Caritas and uh, uh, Catholic charities. charities, but uh, Knights of Columbus, Rotary, Lions, all these groups that do a remarkable job to, to people in need. But in some countries, uh, there is SSUB sometimes we are alone in some countries. And when you have a network of charity that you have in the United States, uh, I'm not saying this to be a friend of you, I'm saying the truth. The American people, you are very, you have solidarity. You do solidarity inside your country. Very talkative. <laughs> <laughs> Not only inside, within your country, but beyond frontiers. SSVP United States used to help a lot uh, other countries in Latin America, sending money through twinning that we call twinning program. When one conference 
uh, sponsor other week conference in other part of the globe. United States is one of the best. We have here lots of cities, uh, Chicago, Phoenix, uh, <coughs> Boston, New York, uh, St. Louis, uh, Los Angeles, Tampa, lots of cities in the United States with this um, um, mentality. Because uh, where is our, where is the poor? Of course, nearby you, but 10,000 kilometers far. So this is very good that the Christian, the Catholics, the people, not only Christians, but the American people, you have this, you, you understand that the, the globe is like this. Sister? So, thank you for those examples. They're really inspiring. And as a college student, um, what role do we have in systemic change? It's up to you because uh, Salvisa de Paul has a sentence that the love is creative until the infinite. I think, I think the sentence like this. So your creativity, your innovation is the limit. So it's up to you. If you, as a student, can, uh, could join us in this challenge, it's up to you to select one specific public or one specific country um, to be in and to send your your experience. Not only money. I'm not talking about only money. Money, money is important, but uh, uh, much more than money, it's your solidarity to these people. Brother, we were together in Rome. Rome, yeah. yeah. Uh, I hope that some students are encouraged by your speech and what have they to do to found a new uh, or to establish a new society of St. Vincent de Paul, for example, at DePaul University. What have they to do? Oh, it's my dream because <laughs> we, we, we have a project, Brother Paul, to found a conference in the university environment. And as we have here an university, DePaul, huh? from the congregation or the mission, Christian, Catholic. This is the best uh, uh, environment we have to create like the, our seven fathers in Sorbonne. So we have the same atmosphere. It's up to you. It's very uh, easy. We have here our pres local president, that is Larry, no, Harry, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if Harry, Harry is here. It's outside, okay. Uh, Harry I I and Pamela. Pamela? They belong to the board of Chicago Council. It's very easy to start uh, the first. And it, look, if you create, I, I'm, not a, I, I'm not a politician, but I will do a promise here. <clears throat> if you found one conference, SSVP conference, within the DePaul University, I will be here at the date of the foundation of this conference. OK, it's up to you now. Yeah. Okay. Not a politician, but a little promise. Pamela? So the first meeting is at eight. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Those that are, are interested, a few years back, there was some groundwork done at DePaul um, to, to do some of this work. I know that the um, biggest amount of work that was done was more to do with the homeless students. So that is already a structure. The yes. So there, there is there's definitely avenues that you can do. Nice, thank you. Dr. Rita. So a lot of times when we think systemic change, we think systems and we think mm -hmm. big systems. And I was impressed by the way your approach is small. Right, it's it's one family at a time, it's three families at a time, those sorts of things. Um, what would you say to a student or a faculty, any of us, who think when we think we got to change the world, we think, oh, you know, I got to go work for Bernie, I got to go, you know, petition the UN, um, you know, large, huge problems like climate change are big big problems that need kind of big solutions. Does the SS, does your society um, approach kind of political big solutions 
or do you always stay on the small level? And um, and if you decide to stay on the small level, why why do you approach it that way instead of like the, the big sort of thing? Doctor, excellent question because we uh, work in these two dimensions: yeah. institutionally, institutionally, politically. We work in our countries. Our national presidents uh, has this duty to work on this direction. But we know that action locally, in small examples as we present to you, it is we have more outcomes, more outcomes when you do in this direction. But we do both. We do advocacy to the poor, that is very important, but we do social justice on the ground. This is very Vincentian. And who is Vincentio? Is are, if you are Vincentio, you understand what I'm saying. Because we are working these two, in these two levels. Excellent question. Sometimes people do not understand, but thank you for your question. We have time until eight. So you talked about the resistance from the members of the society. Um, did you know some resistance from the poor themselves who don't want to be, uh, uh, who don't want to escape their poverty? And, yeah. and did you know some failures in those projects? And did you learn through uh, your failures? Yes, good question. We 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 have to face uh, these two problems. Sometimes the members of our organization. They, are, they have an old-fashioned mind, so they think to do a good uh, charity is the, the number of uh, basket of food you deliver when you do the annual report. This is very good. And I know that in France, for example, we have lots of widows that they, they are living alone. And SSPP members, they do home visits just to talk with these ladies, widows. And sometimes they, they give us the money to go to the market to buy for them the food because they have money. They are not poor materially, but they are poor spiritually or emo emotionally or psychologically. And this is a, a, a real uh, kind of charity because we have to face new kinds of poverty. Hmm? So um, sometimes our Vincentians members are so worried about uh, statistics and number, the uh, quant quantity of donations done, and we forgot to do this. And another mistake we have is not to talk with the poor people to ask them what they really want. Because sometimes we have uh, marvelous ideas, but is it what they want? We have to talk to them. So all these projects, is, uh, they are well, well done because we talk to these people. If you see, uh, all these people are this vocation, this natural vocation. This man works with tea many, many years. Uh, this lady worked with uh, sewing many, many years. Romildo, Romildo works with uh, agricultural uh, issues for many, many years. Romildo. So we have to first ask to them, if not, we will commit a big mistake. Sometimes the Vincentian, we, we know everything. We are doctors of charity. We know uh, everything. Not a doctor, it's a doctor of charity. We, we know everything about who they, they need. No, 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 no. We have to ask them first. If not, we will commit two mistakes together simultaneously. Father? Thank you, Renato. Uh, there is one question that always occupies my mind. Um, it is about fragile states and yes. failing states. Good. And the international index of fragile states point, for instance, to countries in Africa that are in the very okay. negative uh, um, sections of that. Now, the systemic change um, that uh, you have so clearly shown us some of the best practices. My question is, do you think this is sustainable practice when these systemic changes are embedded within collapsing state structures that 
ultimately suppress this when a nation spirals into a cycle of mm -hmm. violence and all that. So can is this a sustainable practice uh, or is it a band-aid solution to a more, a more structural uh, problem? Fantastic question. To be considered, to be considered a project of uh, systemic change, it must be with these both characteristics you said: sustainability and repetition of this project in other parts of the globe. It's both system sustainable and repetition. All these projects we can repeat in all the, the countries. Of course, sometimes not the tea, exactly that tea mm -hmm. that is produced in Kerala, or that vegetable that is here, or that kind of clothes you know, there. But this is the, 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 the main um, characteristic of to be considered a system change. Sustainability, sustainability and repetition. We, you, we can repeat this in other parts of the world. So I believe in this. And I believe that the change starts from the small things. I hope I answered your question. Not, I don't know if you are, if it was satisfactory my answer to you. That's okay. okay. That's okay. Brother? Yes, uh, thank you so much for of this talk, it was wonderful. I kind of have like two questions. My first question is about uh, the governments and the local people. For example, in the Amazon, let's say you go to to help the people in the Amazon, and then after teaching them what they can do, the the government comes and say. We need to move you from here, and they expect to get everything from the land. How how do you help them in that kind of system? And the other question is, do you have some um, expert people to help all this kind of project? I'll start with the second question. This is one of our problems. The expertise to do this. Uh, there is one branch of our family that is the Poe International. They are remarkable. They, they know how to do this project very well. This is one of the challenges of SSVP. Sometimes we don't know how to do these projects. In many countries, I stimulate and motivate the national councils to indicate, to nominate, to nominate uh, one national responsible for projects. In, in South America now, in some days, uh, the 12 countries of South America, they have a meeting exactly about how to prepare a project, how to fill in a questionnaire, an application form, because sometimes we don't know how to do it. I'm not, I'm not talking about the assisted people, I'm talking about Vincentian people. We have difficulty to understand and to fulfill. In, in, in CGI, we have a CIAD, that is a Commission International for Aid and Development, development CIAD. And sometimes many countries don't know how to achieve the money of SEAT. So the second question uh, that you did here, it's a great challenge to have the sanctions, to have professionalism behind us to prepare this project in order to receive the money. Because the private companies will not associate their name to us if they don't see that the projects are really good and we'll keep or we'll uh, break the, the cycle of poverty. And about the first question, if you get a good reputation, you open doors at the governmental levels. In Brazil, it's very easy to build in Sancha. Every major, every deputy, every senator, every governor, everybody knows, ah, oh, you are Vincentio, please come in. But to be Vincentio in India, or in a Muslim country, or in Lebanon, if you go to a major, oh, I'm in Vincentia, I have a pro social pro what is, What is this Vincentia? What is SSVP what? Mm -hmm. SS what? Huh? Mm -hmm. 
in Lebanon, for example, we have 10 provinces in Lebanon, but three provinces are Muslims. And the law, the local law says that to be president of any, 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 any organization must be Muslim. So in three provinces in, in Lebanon, there is no SSPP because of the local law. So if you get a good reputation, if you belong to a country that is Christian or Catholic or people in a good will, it's more <coughs> easy to be Vincentian and to deal with the politicians and deal with the governments. But if you are in different countries, it's very difficult to be Vincentian. For example, to be Vincentian in India, we only have 2% of the 2% of the population in India are uh, Catholics. So it's very difficult to, and they are, they are doing a remarkable job because there are 7,000 groups and 70,000 members. Uh, after the United States and before Brazil, they are the second largest, largest society in the world. In a country, oh, I, I need, I need too much water. Yes. I, I need that, that project of water here. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is the project I need. Huh? Thank you, Brother Marlo. Uh, I, I, I forget what I've uh, uh, So, uh, this is very important. How to have this institutional, institutional approach to the, to the government. Good question. <laughs> you can take it. No problem. Okay. okay, I just thank you for the speech. It was very uh, powerful and I learned a lot from it. But what I want to know is how do you think poverty resulted and what do you think the cause of poverty is around the world? Very shy but very profound. <laughs> you know, our founder, one of our founders, Osana had exactly this question. We are very professional to treat the consequences of the poverty. Oh, we are experts on this. But how to deal with the causes of the poverty? And that is not the material poverty we are talking. Even we solve all the material poverty in the world, it less the spiritual poverty. So that's why Christ said, poor, you will have it, um, I don't know the, always. always, but Jesus Christ is not uh, saying that we will live, uh, in, no, he's saying that even we overcome the problem of the material poverty, we have the spiritual poverty. And in my opinion, the spiritual poverty is uh, bigger is bigger than the material in my opinion in my opinion because if you see seven billion people in this globe and we have one billion people Christian uh, under my perspective I don't want to disrespect anybody here but under my perspective we are facing a very very uh, spiritual poverty so uh, even <coughs> We treat the material poverty, uh, it less the spiritual poverty. So, uh, revolutions or change the systems <coughs> or change governments could help temporarily, temporarily. But poor and people need it, needing a hand, a counseling, an embrace, a hug, a kiss, a smile. Because for me, everything is charity. Especially nowadays, in this world very unfair very unfair. If you give a, a smile for somebody, it is charity. It is indeed charity, in my opinion. I don't want to disrespect anybody or any religion, okay? Sorry if I commit this mistake here today. Sister? In addition to the content about um, structural systemic change, what I found very clear and interesting and informative was your overview of the society and its organization. Renato, you showed us 
five values that I presume are the characteristic virtues or values of the society. My question is, are those the ones that came from the early, the founding generation? Vincent gave five values or virtues to the, this congregation, and only three to the daughters. And your wording is different, and I didn't know if that's a reflection of a Mento or if these are traced directly back to Frederick and his companions. Hallelujah. We talk a lot about values <laughs> at DePaul. Uh, yes, hallelujah. Um, very hard question to answer. I, I have no answers for everything. Uh, but I think both, sister, I think, I think both. Our founders and today, because we were not there in 1833. It's up to us now. So we are the founders today. They are here blessing us, <coughs> helping us to do the best we can do for the poor. But we were not in 1833. And they are not into 2020. It's up to us now. So I think um, this transi uh, transmission of this charisma, mm -hmm. uh, this is what, what CGI and National Council exists. Why a National Council exists and CGI does exist? To keep the unity of this uh, organization, to uh, transmit these values in order to get this vision, our, our vision is to get, to be recognized as a worldwide organization which promotes the integral human development of those most in need. This is our vision for the future. And our mission, to be a network of friends, because the founders first, they were friends, and then they create the Society of Summit de Paul. So, to stimulate friendship, a network of, of friends seeking holiness. Sometimes this is, to, this is totally an old fashioned talking about holiness. Seeking holiness through the personal service to the poor and the advocacy for so, so, social justice. And our values, service without complaining, because sometimes people complain, complain, complain a lot. Service, spirituality. First, a heart full of spirit, and then put the hands to serve the poor. Humility, I'm president, I'm nothing. I'm brother of my group. Charity, St. Vincent the Pope, charity. And empathy, that for me is the most. These this five words came for an international survey that we did it on the first year of our mandate. It has no my finger on, on these pro, uh, procedures. People from SSVP, we received 5,000 5, suggestions to make the new statement of vision, mission, and the values. Because in the past was very big, impossible to, by heart to say exactly. But now it's very easy to understand uh, what is this SSVP? And empathy for me, it's the totally new word that appeared now. Empathy. That is suffer as you are suffering. Because sometimes we see the poor, we see the people without job, like the Good Samaritan. You know the, the history of the Good Samaritan. The priest dropped by and okay, bye bye. The, the, the other best, but the Samaritan stopped, treat the, the, the hurts, paid extra money just in case, and then when he come back, asked again about the, the cure of that man. So this is empathy. This is empathy. A selfish, a selfish man or woman cannot be empathy. Only do charity who is not selfish. If you are selfish, it's impossible to do charity. Because selfish, no empathy. Brother? Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, thanks so much for your presentation. And uh, you were speaking about spiritual poverty there for a while. And of course, uh, it is maybe uh, Frederick had two lives. Uh, he yeah. was a great teacher. And uh, they say also that he, he was 50 years ahead of uh, Pope Leo in, uh, in the uh, social justice agenda for the Catholic Church, which started in 1893. Yes, Rerum Novarum. Yes, Rerum Novarum. Rerum Novarum. But he was also, he, he was very interested in civilization and the Catholic dimension and was a very great apologist for it in the best sense of apology. And it's uh, like part of his life that hasn't been developed. So I'm not saying that I'm addressing this to Vincent, to SSVP, but I wonder to the whole uh, even Vincentian family whether we've actually capitalized on his his gifts. And, and especially, there's another question there too. It's like, what is the relationship between his, his, uh, his achievement as a professor, his, his fame and all that, and, and it's like we have half of him, but I wonder what about the other half? Okay. Yeah. Your first question was about, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it was like, uh, can... Oh, Frederick so and... Uh, Frederick speaking to spiritual poverty, whether uh, yes, whether yes. we've been able to tap into his... his uh, yeah. Ah, yes, his yes. So, Look, um, we are praying a lot for his canonization. It is very soon. I cannot precise the date because it's, it's up to the Vatican. Mm -hmm. But we are working hard to present all the documents. We have discovered one new miracle in Brazil. So we are working hard with the medical documentation. When does a nun uh, will be declared saint? Uh, many of the Catholics, many of the Christians will join our society because of this man called Ozana, Antoine, Fred, Antoine Frederic Ozana. And they will realize that the, the modern is Ozana. Ozana is not 200 years ago. Ozana is like us, it's like us, our, uh, we here. Ozana at the university, not, as, not only as a student, but as a teacher. Ozana with his writings, his books, uh, his speeches, his articles on many, many, many different newspapers. So he used to talk about uh, vacations, uh, on <coughs> Sundays, not work on Sundays, decent salary for the people, before Marx and before Heron of Aron. And Marx sometimes is more recognized than Ozana in this. So we have to talk more about Ozana. Ozana is a model of young people. It's a model of husband, it's a model of son, of student, of lawyer, of journalist, of teacher, of writer. Ozana is an example for everything of layman, a lay, a layman, a lay people. Uh, and I know that you know uh, something about Ozana. You have already studied about Ozana. Have you? So yes, so we, we realize that you know about Tosana. Thank you for your, your interest. You, you may want to read Dr. Ray Sickinger's book uh, on Tosana that came out two years ago in the United States. It's probably the best thing right now in any about all the aspects you discuss. It's from the Notre Dame Press. Yeah. Um, thank you for visiting us here at Paul. You gave us some great examples about how um, you're addressing the systemic change in these countries, but my question is how are you addressing uh, the root of the, these problems? It's, it's difficult to answer, huh? because it depends on the country just depends of the leaders we have in every country, it depends of the environment, the government, the people. If, uh, for example, in Brazil, sometimes people are very lazy. Brazil, we, we want to make some changes in the people sometimes. So it depends of the culture of the, 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 that country. It's a very difficult question, system. 
very difficult place, but I will reflect. Everybody will reflect this here about your question. Sometimes I have no answer. <laughs> and not shame to, to seek it. Dr. Wiener, we are... I think if there are no more questions, then we can uh, uh, wrap up. Uh, does anybody else have a uh, final question? Anybody want the last word? All right. Uh, um, when you say last word, <laughs> when you say last word, uh, when we are uh, flying, the, the the assistants on the check-in say, "What's your final destination?" <laughs> <laughs> I say, "Not now." <laughs> yes. <Not> now. <laughs> Just I'm going to Chicago. But I hope my final destination, but not now. <laughs> Heaven can wait. Before we thank uh, you, Renato, Karen has a, just a couple of announcements. Yeah, just a couple of things. If there are any student leaders here with our common mission, um, Machek over here in the blue shirt will meet with you um, just outside the doors afterwards for a brief reflection. Um, and then I just wanted to let you guys know about um, our next event in this series on Vincentian Responses to Poverty. It's uh, March 12th, Project Dream, a daughter of charity, um, is coming to talk about um, really innovative HIV AIDS initiative in um, Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and then our center is not um, directly sponsoring this talk, but um, on Monday, this coming Monday, safeguarding in the church, the, the Jesuit Father Hans Solner, who is president of the uh, Center for Child Protection, will be here um, through the Archdiocese and Paul to talk about um, safeguarding children in the church, um, given the recent abuse crisis in those sorts of things. So, um, more information about those and um, other events are on our table out front. And um, that's, that's it. All right. <laughs> um, just to thank uh, many thanks to Carmen, to Marlon, to Dr. Rillian. Since from the beginning, you are very, you were you are and you were very kind with me, uh, especially correcting some English mistakes. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, this is, you have a good team, Doctor. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs>